Welcome to this Combat Mission AI Triggers tutorial. This is a very, very basic tutorial. We are going to cover the various concepts and fundamentals of creating a trigger. But to get there, I'm going to make the assumption that you know nothing about plans, orders, groups, and obviously triggers. So this video is going to be a little long but it will be divided into um, the various topics that we're going to cover. That said, each section will assume that you have watched the previous sections. If you want to skip over the various different sections onto AI triggers or any other part, uh, the timings for, for the start of the various sections should be appearing on the screen now. Okay, so the uh, first section is building a test map. So we're going to do Scenario Editor. And the first thing I'm going to do is to change the battle type to Meeting Engagement. It's just something I want to do. Um, we're going to give it a title because, I, I mean, I've created one of these already that I'm going to use for various things. But um, out of habit, we created a 0, zero test template. Now there's a, a purpose behind this that you'll see um, later on. Description, I'm just going to call this a test template. And I'm not only going to use this for um, creating plans and tr trying out plans and triggers, how they work, etc. And uh, I'll also use it for um, different units to see how they work together. So it, it really is a test battle field that we're going to, and it's going to be very basic. We will now save it and we'll call this again 00, zero test template and we're going to save it in scenarios. We are saving it here because we want to test it as a battle. Now let's go to the map. Right, we don't need a very large area because we're going to have troops running around and everything. Um, but you can make it any size that uh, suits you and because it's going to be so basic you can change the size and shape of it as you wish. But for our purposes, we are going to increase the width to whoops, 400 and the depth to 400. So in this sort of um, zoom mode, we can see the whole battlefield. We could make it larger, but uh, for our purposes, this is fine. Um, the basic idea is we, we are going to um, create two embankments, what, one for the Soviets to hide behind and the other one for the Germans to hide behind so they don't shoot at each other. And to achieve this, we just click on dirt and then we go down a small place, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it doesn't matter about um, if you don't get this perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Okay. So, what we then want to move to is the setup zones. For axis, now we increase our paintbrush size. I'll just go across. Get rid of that. No, I, now, just in case you don't know, um, let's just build that again. What I did was I just right-clicked. Okay. This one's a little bit more messy. So again, right-click, right-click, right-click. Okay, so I'm going to save again. Now, I want to go to Elevations. 
and here we want to um, create elevation anchor points for our battlefield now if I click on direct you can see it has a default setting of 20 and down at the bottom you want to go all along the bottom and all along the top just from a point of view of uh, logical steps rather than expediency um, I'm going to use the plus key and as you can see the direct um, here for the anchor points is increased to 25 and I'm now going to go over the dirt marker and the thing about this is you can always change the terrain tiles at a later time but I, I tend to do it this way so that um, I can clearly see where the um, changes significant changes in elevation are now what's happened here is that uh, I don't know how easily you can see it let's try and zoom in all in the center everything's now increased to 25 which means we've got uh, a, an embankment going up and then it's a flat top and an embankment going down, down here and I don't want that so I'm going to change that about down to 20 again and just very crudely change it like that you can do whatever shape you like or, or whatever have various uh, indentations as you prefer now I'm just just going to quickly save it and just to give you an idea of what we've done so far okay here we are and you can see we've got this embankment going up and there's our dirt marker for the top and you can see it goes down a nice gentle slope and up and a little bit steeper on this side where, and this is where the troops will be I'm going to do the next step because this video is specifically for ultimately AI triggers and I want to make this as visually as easy to understand as possible um, you can obviously yourself add buildings and stuff for your test map but we're just going to mark out an area where the trigger will be now obviously when you whoops let's change that back put that down to one when you do triggers um, normally you, you can put them anywhere that you want this is just purely to sh give you a visual representation so dirt we are just going to create a oblong shape and this is going to be um, a small area where we're going to move tro troops into etc to um, activate triggers a, a trigger Let's actually have a, a little bit of a, a central different colour. Um, the direct, we still got it at 20. I'm going to make the centre 20. And now I'm going to increase it to 23, I think. And on the dirt tiles, I'm just going to go around. That's fine, I don't mind that's over. Let's just have a quick preview. Here we are. And as you can see, we've got this little area. Now you could have that as a building, a farmstead, a small forest, but we're not going to do anything. Let's just save. 
Now the next step for this template is to add the units. So go to units, purchase axis first of all, add infantry. We don't need many troops at all so we're going to go with straggler group. Purchase, as we can see over here. Now I'm just going to expand these slightly. Um, as you can see in this straggler group they use section and squad names. If you remember the uh, Commonwealth and British forces it tends to be platoon and then you have sections but they call these sections and then you have squads. Anyway, let's, uh, let's just expand this slightly again. Now I'm going to add some vehicles. I'm not saying we're going to use vehicles, I'm just show you. Uh, so if we hit the this formations button, which is actually a drop down menu, we go to single vehicles. Now you can see there's a small selection of vehicles, but that's because we've got the infantry uh, tab marked. So if we go armoured infantry, and you can see as we go down you get different selections, obviously air support and fortifications don't have any. So we're going to go to armour, now for the Germans there's rather a, a lot of vehicles, it's two pages, but uh, I'm going to go for a, at a Panzer IV, and I'm also going to go for an armoured car Puma, and finally a half track of sorts and that's more than enough this is more than enough now one of the th things and, and a lot of people have been saying it's it would be helpful to have the uh, points costs within creating a, a scenario um, to appear as well much as it does when you do a quick battle and choose forces but anyway that's just an aside okay so we've now purchased all of our Axis forces and now the way we're going to do this is deploy. Okay here we are in the map and you can see all the troops are pointing in the wrong direction and this is a good habit to get into. Um, if we hold the shift key down and then just draw a square then we go to the combat tab, face, pull back slightly and they are now all looking in the correct direction. Now the thing is I don't want them peeking over the embankment, not that they are because you can see, but I also want to spread them out slightly. And I'm, This is my template so I might as well do this now, get it over and done with rather than say I'm always having to do this when I'm, I'm testing. That's the axis done. Um, I think I'll move these guys slightly back away from the edge. But I'm, I'm happy none of them are looking over. So press escape and come back. That's the Germans done. So I'm going to save. Now we go to Purchase Allied Infantry. We're going to change single vehicles back to formations. Now we're going to, you've got all the different choices, but we're going to pick a 1944 Rifle Battalion. We don't need everyone here, we just want a company of riflemen. So we click on uh, the bottom one, because this makes it easier. Then we press Delete delete again as you can see it's rolling up until we've only got the first company. Again we want to add some vehicles so go to single vehicles, armour, we'll add a light tank and a T-34-85 and an armoured car. This little arrow here denotes that the vehicles have been added into the command structure. Okay, you can also rename them if you want to, but we're not worried about that. So again, 
deploy and it's the same process so you can see that they are over here all pointing in the wrong direction actually I think I'll move these down as well escape save done we have now completed our test map so if we just to show you if we come out of here just exit going to battle you can see we've got 00 test template first thing we're going to do is load up our template and then we're going to save it under a different name so let's first of all do the title and the reason I'm doing this is that if everything goes horribly wrong and I really muck it out I can always just go back to let's call this test battle actually I can go back to the original template and start again so let's save now we change the save name to 99 test v a t t whoops if only I could spell okay now groups go to units and we're not worried about the axis because we're going to use them to trigger the trigger so we go to uh, purchase allied and that gives us our list of units so how does this all work let's just expand these slightly right you get up to 16 groups and the way to think of them is as with other games you can um, link units together under a common keyboard number now groups within combat mission work on the same sort of principle um, what we can do is we can assign units to up to 16 different groups the problem is when we get onto plans um, you can't have 16 different groups you can't have 16 groups per plan you there is only one set of groups per side uh, by default everyone is in group one and you designate uh, units into a group by hitting the F keys so if we pick uh, say the sniper team and we hit F2 you can see it's designated as A2 and we could go through and pick that sniper team as A2 as well as you can see and maybe that squad as A2 so when I do plans triggers and whatever um, and I refer and I associate um, the group to a particular plan and have sets of orders it's referring to these units uh, to you can also see that uh, against these areas we've got a asterisk and this means that in this platoon there is more than one group designated because as I've said everyone is by default F1 group 1 so let's just uh, change all of these back now you use F1 to F8 keys to de designate groups so I hear you ask what about uh, group 9 through 16 well you allocate those quite simply by pressing the appropriate F key twice so if I press F1 twice we get A9 if I press F2 twice I get A10 now what we're going to do for the purposes of um, the trigger demonstration we're going to use first platoon and what I'm going to do is I'm going to designate um, 
second squad as F2 and third squad as group 3 excuse me mixing up the terminology I do apologize and sniper team as group 4 now if we go into sorry that's wrong if we go into deploy allied so we can actually see the units and here we are so you just got to find them now as you can see third platoon HQ it's got A1 and we can go through A1, A1, A1 and you can see everyone is defaulted to A1 Excuse me while I try and find first platoon. Here we go. So as you can see, first platoon HQ is A1. The sniper is A4. Second squad is A2. Third squad is A3. and it's as simple as that so that basically is it for groups as I said there's a limitation of 16 groups you can mix and match whatever you want so I could put in um, say this light tank into the A2 group or just simply take it out Now let's load up the scenario again. 99 test battle, which is our one that we're modifying. Now to go to plans, you need to press on AI. And you can see here this information. We've got one, two, three, four, five axis plans, support targets, one, two, three, four, five allied plans and support targets. We don't have to fill all of them in, we can fill one or more, whatever combination we like. But uh, as we know, what we want to do is um, an allied plan because we are going to play the part of the Germans and trigger the Soviets to react to us getting into this trigger position. But uh, let's just quickly discuss about the plans. now. Click on the Allied for the moment. So we can only have five plans. And when you start a scenario in single player, one of the plans that's been created will be allocated to the computer side. If you've created plans for both sides, do not expect units on your side to follow a plan so there's no um, I'm going to create a scenario with a, a, a company but I'm only going to be in charge of a platoon whilst the computer controls the rest of the company that's not going to happen uh, a human side you're in control of everything no plan is loaded for the computer side then it randomly chooses one of the plans now which one it chooses is a combination of the number of plans that you've actually got and also this um, drop down used frequently used sometimes used rarely not used this designates if you like a value to a particular plan and it figures out from that um, which one to actually randomly use. So a used frequently is more likely to pop up than a used sometimes or a used rarely. Not used means it's not going to happen. Now on here we are coordinating groups, unit groups with orders and everything but we're not going to go into orders just that I'm going to do that uh, separately next. Um, you can 
copy plans that you create after you've done all the groups and orders by doing a control C and then a control V. Um, as you can see down here, we can designate our 16 groups, which one we want to do for a particular um, set, up, set of orders. You've got setup where you can actually paint a particular position that you want a group to start on. So, which means for this plan, plan one, we could say, okay, group one, set up, and all we need to do is just paint an area like this, and everyone in group one will set up at the beginning here. If we did it for here, for uh, plan two, for group one, then if plan two was picked, everyone would appear in this position. Here we can, if you go down here, you can't quite see them, but if we hit the add button, you can see it's added an order. So we can now start uh, issuing uh, an order for this particular group. And there are up to 16 orders for that group within this plan. Down here, it's more to do with orders, which we shall cover a little bit later on. Plans basically link together groups to do a particular tasks via orders, and that is it. So that's plans. We've already done um, about groups, putting units into groups, and we've already touched on plans. A plan is about giving one or more groups each a set of orders. So, with that in mind, as we know, we've, we're, we are going to be playing the part of the Germans and it's the AI that we want to play the part of the Soviets. So, let's go down to Plan 1 Allied. We're going to keep the use frequently, but uh, we're going to use our pre-set up groups, which is 2, 3 and 4, so we're going to go to Group 2. Okay, so... Um, we don't need to you to paint a setup area, but we can do. We could set them up anywhere, but we no, don't need to do that. So I'm going to hit the add button. This is a new thing, but uh, we're just touching on orders. We're not triggers is going to be the next thing. So this is order number two, and here we have the commands for this order. So. You've got Max Assault, Assault, Advance, Quick and Dash. They don't match up to the movement orders you see in the panel when you play uh, single player because they, each of them does a little bit more um, than those. I mean, for example, Advance does a sort of Overwatch type moving um, teams within a squad, for example. And uh, just to show you that, let's do an advance. Uh, this one, uh, as you can see, we've got the options here for if we're going to go into a building. So we just leave it at mixed. Normal, you can see we've got different ambush for armor, etc., etc., different times. I'm trying to keep this simple, so I'll leave you to go over the uh, manual to read up on those and also experiment with them. I just want to keep this video as short and as simple as possible. No dismount, passengers dismount. So, what are we going to do? We're going to put our squad into this area. So we paint a position. So order number two is go here. Now there's another aspect to this. And that is, if we click on this, go back to setup. We now find at the bottom here we've got times. Exit between. Now this exit between and uh, is very important because it gives you a timing for when the um, unit basically performs the next order. So for it to perform order two this is the start time 
and you're giving it a time up to um, trying to achieve it. What we're going to do though is for this one, the, the end position, we're going to increase it. Now if we just click on the plus it goes up every 30 seconds but if we hold the shift key down it goes up a lot faster and this is a 30 minute scenario so but we're going to put it at uh, just over an hour. I'm not going to worry for this at the moment, worry about this for the moment. This is to do with triggers. So group 2 is going to on its own perform order 2 and arrive here. So let's just save this. Exit. Battle. Here we go. 99 test battle. Axis. Now, thing is, we want to see the Russians do this because we're, we're testing it. We want to see this in action. So we choose the scenario author test. Press OK. So here we are with the German forces, which I am in control of. Just to prove that. Section HQ. Quick, quick, quick. Which we don't want to perform anyway. So to, as you know, we've got our um, squad with its order plan one frequently used and it's the only one there so it's going to be executed and we should see sometimes it takes a few seconds before it starts here we go and as you can see only part of the squad is running because we're using the advanced command so it's sort of a, an overwatch type thing although obviously they're not doing much overwatching but you get the idea of the, princ the principle of the idea and here they come so let's just forward this because we're not too worried we're not actually going to be fighting a battle see that it's uh, got the command line there obviously we can't do anything with it or the team We've got no access to any commands because we are in charge of the Germans so that was a simple plan that we executed Now we could of course um, choose one of the other groups we created and do um, extra but uh, let's just concentrate on group 2. We've got the order 2 here. Now set up you can see we've got these timings here. Order 2 has no timings but if we added an order and let's just say this time we're going to do a dash and we're going to do a dash here. Now again there's no timings but we go back to order 2 and we can see we do have timings for this order and what you'll notice if we just quickly go back to setup exit between 0000, 000 and 010300 Order 2 has automatically set the exit as after the last time of setup. Now obviously we don't want to wait around for an hour and also um, it's only 30 minutes long. So what we're going to do and we're going to use the shift key is we are going to bring that down. Actually, what we'll do, which is to show this, it took it'll take about five or six minutes, but we'll set that to ten minutes. 
Okay, so it will perform the setup to come down here immediately. Then, after 10 minutes, it will then perform order 3, which is to go here. Just save it. Going to battle, test battle, fight, we're playing the part of the Germans, and obviously it's saved the fact that we're doing the scenario author test. Okay, so let's just get on with it. As you can see, they're moving into the position. And now they've done it. They're all here. Just to prove it while it's going on, I can have a quick chat. Now, you can see here, they're all settled down and they'll be like this. Let's just end it and go on to the next one to prove my point. And that was set up order two to come here. Now, if you remember, order two had an exit after 10 minutes to do order three, which is to come round here. Now, a thing to remember on those times, they don't relate to the orders, the execution and completion of the orders. They relate to the scenario time. So these guys won't perform the next order because I put 10 minutes on the exit, the first exit. They won't perform the next order until 10 minutes of the scenario has passed. It's not 10 minutes after completing this order, it's 10 minutes after the scenario's passed. It's a little bit confusing, but uh, that's the way they've done it. So if we just go forwards, as you can see, they're not moving. Here we in, are in the 10th uh, minute. Not moving at all. And here they go. And that's an important thing to remember with regards to the times. It's in relation to the beginning of the scenario, not the completion of the previous order. As you can see, we did a dash, and all of them ran at the same time. Okay, so let's end this. So that's really it for um, assigning a group orders within a plan. You can, each group, there are 16 groups that you can allocate as we've gone over before. And each of these can have up to, including the setup, up to 16 orders. Right, so that's it really for orders and uh, you'll be glad to hear it's AI triggers next. So, for those of you who have been watching the whole video, finally we've arrived at AI Triggers. For those of you that have just skipped forward, well, here we are. That was quick. Now, after that little flippancy, um, I've loaded up the uh, scenario again, and I've cleared the plan from the previous orders, because we're going to do something fresh. Okay, so the idea of this is it's very important to remember this, we 
are going to set the Russians to react to something that we, the Germans, are going to do. So the first thing we need to do is go to mission and then we want to go to terrain objectives allied because this is something that the Soviets are going to react to. As you can see we've got 15 objectives and unfortunately what happens is that uh, these objectives are turned into triggers so we can have a combination of 15 objectives and triggers. Anyway so what we will do is we will turn around and say we will paint this area here. Now at the moment it thinks we're doing an objective for the Soviets because you can see we've got all the choices here known to both points etc. If we click on the drop down here we can see at the bottom we've now got these AI triggers and because we want to the Soviets to react to something the Germans are doing, i.e. Like us, we hit the AI trigger enemy. Now if we wanted it just for armor we'd have AI trigger enemy armor but enemy we don't care whether it's infantry or armor. Now you can see all those other options have disappeared but we can still give it an objective name and what we are going to do is um, we're just going to call this trig no. objective zero one trig trig okay so we've now set up this trigger this pressure plate if you like now we go down to the AI and as I said <coughs> I've cleared everything so we go to plan one we are setting up a new plan as you can see it's completely blank so group two but we're not going to use group two actually what we're going to do is use group four and uh, for those of you who haven't watched the group setup that is a sniper team and what we are going to do then is we are going to add and we're going to say yes this can be triggered and what we are going to do is No, actually that's too far away because they're over here aren't they so we'll do it here okay so leave that at advanced etc now we have to go back to setup and change the timings so the zero zero is fine and we'll set the timing so hold the shift key down and let's put it at about an hour now we haven't actually told it yet to use the trigger this these orders that I've set up for the sniper team are still separate from the trigger that I've set up where I've changed the objective to a trigger we do this by hitting the wait for now we get a little nice little box here and object 01 trigger hit OK now we'll hit save we'll come out and run the battle scenario all for test because we want to watch the uh, what the Russians do so here we are and you can see and don't worry about this we will show you what happens in a future example you can see that we've got the trigger all marked out objective 01 trigger 
I put it a bit too far over there. But this is our sniper team, so let's just start. And as you can see, no one is doing anything. Just to prove my point, it's got a few minutes in. Nothing. He's still sitting there. Okay. Let's come to the end. Now I'm going to take this squad and I'm going to take an assault team and I'm going to have them running fast to that position there so right into the trigger and off we go see my boys are off let's go to these guys they're not doing anything they are not moving can just about see my lads moving over there sorry about the camera controls moving over to the trigger zoom out slightly see them Ooh, almost here they are they're on the trigger and there can be a slight pause before these guys do anything Come on, come on. You can see we've now got the command line to go over there. And off they go. Not quite what I wanted because I wanted to be on top of the um, bank. wanted them to snipe but we can adjust that but as I said what we've just done is we've performed a trigger this action has been triggered by the Germans the enemy going there into the AI now we didn't like that position there did we So Allied Plan, Group 4, Order 2, and we'll take that off, and we'll put it there, that might look a little bit better. And save it. Right, just before we close off, I just want to show one more thing, do one more thing, plus also um, about, as you as remember, or when we're doing the scenario test mode, we can see that objective marker, which doesn't look very nice. Now, I'll, I'll show you that in, in a minute or two, how that disappears. So, just to recap, we have group four and on its second order we've now got it going here now what I want to do is because it's just going to be a sniper team looking down here I want also uh, once I get into position 
I want um, one or two squads to actually assault here. So, how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, I just want to mark this area because I've got to set this up as a trigger. And just to make sure I get it right, I'm going to do my little trick of dirt. Just mark it like that there. Okay, so intermission and it's an allied terrain objective because we are giving a trigger to the Soviets. I know I'm repeating myself but you know it's good to repeat yourself things like this. So we paint what's going to be the trigger. Obviously it's shown up as an objective. We hit the Occupy and we say it's a friendly. So any friendlies that go into this area will launch this trigger. We call it Objective 02 Trig. So we're going to AI. Now, Group 4, that's our sniper team. And I'm happy about them being there. I, well, I don't know what's going to happen to them because this is just this is just a very very crude um, example. I'm not going to do anything flash. So this is um, number two squad, group two. So what I'm going to do is set these guys up. I'm going to add. I'm going to say this is a trigger. Go back to setup. It's kept all of this information down here. What am I going to wait for? Onto this area and as we can see now we've got both triggers here. We've also group, got group 4 order 2 as well. But we're going to go with the objective. O2 trigger. So for group 2, when group 4 hits here, we are going to not going to advance, we are going to run to this position. Now I'm going to add order 3, and in this case a max assault here. So once this trigger is activated by my friendly sniper team, squad 2 is going to run over here and then assault here. Now, I'm also going to have squad number three do this. So again, set up, add. This is all, this all looks needs to be changed. Wait for, and we've got all the objectives listed. Now, obviously, you've got Group 2 and Group 4, etc. We can fiddle around with those, but we're only worried about objectives. You can play about with the other things as much as you want. So, we are just, this is just to get you up and running. So, again, Group 3. We are going to have them. dash here then for order 3 and this is not triggered we're going to do a max assault here because this is get, gets to be the dodgy bit now let's just sorry check through everything 
that's fine. I want to reduce that. Order free, that's fine. Let's check on second squad. That's fine. That's fine. Just go through that. Oops. It's where I start to get a bit nervous about it all. So hopefully this is going to work. We save the battle. Exit. Scenario offer test, okay. So there we can see. Trigger one, trigger two. And let's run it. Just got a few turns in just to show. Okay, now let's get my team on the move. Sorry, I have to get to the end of the turn. Okay, assault team. And I'm going to have them run like mad. Here. Nearly there. See the scout team's already got its uh, order in place. And off they go. Now hopefully they're not going to die because before they reach the trigger point because that's going to spoil it somewhat. Arch one's dead. And there you can see, these have now got their orders. And away they go. Looks like I've killed both. Entirely successful for the um, scout team. But you can see the Germans getting into that position, onto that trigger, triggered the sniper team to move here, and the subsequent trigger here made the two squads maneuver into this position, ready for an assault. Now you can't guarantee that they will actually perform the orders that they're given or in the if you give a 
different timings but they'll perform them in time they will try their best an assault line marker or was that a slow move it's been swapped to so they are attempting to take the pit although this team It's also got the uh, marker. To slightly move forward. So they modified their uh, behaviour because of what happened. Anyway. So the only other thing to show you is what happens we run this as a normal battle. So here we are and as you can see the objective trigger markers have disappeared because we are in a proper battle. So my side does not know that there are triggers here and here. So we're going to take this um, squad and let's just move them onto the top of the embankment and we'll have them sit there for a, a move or two. I will fast forward so it's not going to get too boring. They do have binoculars, so they should see anything that tries to come over the top here. Do this for a couple of turns, just to show nothing is happening. going to do a fast run into the pit you can see the embankment can't see anything yet but then it takes as we've seen before maybe a minute before they will react to the trigger Oh, look at this, all these sound contacts, so... Looks like we're going to get ready for... The assault is going to happen. I 
Uh, not quite yet. Here it goes. Not very successful from the Germans, uh, the Russians' point of view. And there you have it. So I think what we'll do is we'll just um, menus and we'll surrender. Review map. As you can see, our sniper team are here in position. And the two squads that we ordered to maneuver up here. And there you have it. I hope that gives you an idea of the basics of creating uh, triggers and you can experiment as much as you like. Well, thanks very much for watching.